Hi, I'm Kathleen Zemanski, and I'm a business feng shui master, and I'm an expert at helping you with person, space, and time. The astrology piece is about what's trending in your life right now. The business feng shui is about how we can help you because you're, what's happening in your astrology chart to live the most fulfilled life and using favorable timing, doing the right action at the right time with the time blazer. This week's video actually comes from someone in the community who asked, how do you take a feng shui compass reading? It's actually a great question and an essential part of classical feng shui. And today I'm gonna to show you the four easy steps on how to take a feng shui compass reading. Now, the reason that you're going to want to take a feng shui reading is so that you can superimpose any feng shui dial, whether it be the annual dial, which we're going to talk a little bit about today, and how you can superimpose that properly over your floor plan. Now, this is a key tenant to feng shui is to make changes to your environment and through your actions, of course, that's going to bring about positive change in your life. Now, I've been successfully using feng shui in my personal and professional life for over 20 years. And if you're willing to try a new way of using your space in a way that supports your endeavors, you will see positive change in your life. Okay, you're going to need a few materials to get started. You're going to need a digital compass, and I would just use the one that comes free on your phone. On any smartphone, you're going to be able to see that. I use actually a more professional version of that when I'm with clients or even in my own space, but truthfully, I will also pull out my digital compass when I'm trying to find a certain direction at a certain time, and it could be kind of incognito. People think I'm texting actually, but I'm really taking a compass reading. You're also going to need an accurate floor plan. And then you're going to need, obviously, the building that you're going to want to feng shui. And then my annual feng shui, uh, feng shui dial, which I'm going to tell you how to get that in just a few minutes. Now, taking a compass reading is actually the easy part, figuring it figuring out how to properly place the compass dial once you've taken that reading over your floor plan is where people tend to mess up. But let me show you how I go through the process with each and every project, whether it be for my own home, uh, on the annual basis, or starting a new project, I go through the exact steps that I'm gonna tell you about right now. So first of all, you need to have ready an accurate floor plan. And I do mean accurate. You're gonna want something that someone has either done up for you in CAD, unless you're an architect or a designer who really can draw these out by hand. But mostly, I the <laughs> the, floor plans that have been submitted to me that say, oh, I can do this accurately, it's not. So have somebody professionally do that, do that investment in yourself, you'll be happy that you did. But first of all, you're gonna need that accurate floor plan. And what you're gonna wanna see is obviously the front door, your entryway, bathrooms, bedrooms, and where the kitchen is located. And this is if it's in a home space. And if we're working on your workspace, which I highly recommend doing both because your spaces are connected to you, then you're gonna to wanna to see where the entryway is at, front door obviously, reception area, the bathrooms and kitchen if you have that within your building, as well as where the top management and CEO sits. Now, you may be a solopreneur, so that makes you CEO. So we definitely wanna make sure you're sitting in the most vibrant area of your space so that you can achieve success on the projects that, you're, that you are working on. Now, you may be renting a room. You may be it, ha renting or leasing a suite within a larger building. Don't worry about that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna you know, bring this down to a uh, smaller footprint, if you will, but you still follow those exact same steps. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to look at the floor plan. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a complete square of your building, good for you because that's called four point gold, which means you have a complete uh, deck of cards, if you will, to play your hand. You have nothing missing and there's nothing that's getting in the way of too much or too little. It's kind of just right. But most architecture that I see these days is not a complete square. So we're going to have to deal with what's called extensions and protrusions. And we'll talk about that in future videos. I first want you to just get the the significance of those, but first I wanna just get that floor plan taken care of with a compass dial on there. That's what this video is gonna be about today. 
Okay, so then the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to square off the building from either the protrusions or the uh, missing sectors within a house or your office building or office space. And then once you have done that, and again, this is going to be in the resource guide, those step to step on how to figure that out. But now we are able to get that complete square, if you will. And then what I'd like you to do is just take an X from from corner to corner, and that's gonna find your exact center of either the larger building, if you're doing that, or the room that you have the control over, which is because you're renting a smaller footprint, if you will. So what you're gonna do from that point is, you're gonna stand in the middle of the building. Let me just stand up right here. You're gonna stand in the middle of the building and just kind of get parallel with the wall opposite or with the front door, which you're standing if that happens to be in the middle. But basically you're going to take that compass direction. Okay, I've got 127 Southeast. Good, now I'm gonna just jot that down on my floor plan. And then what I do from there is I superimpose the compass, that the compass dial and in this particular case, we're gonna be working a lot with the annual compass style, and you're gonna to wanna to superimpose that over your floor, floor plan. And from there, you're gonna be ready to take the next step and in the next video about how to use that how to use that compass dial and to do feng shui for your space. So click below to receive that free resource guide that I was talking about, and that's about the the step-by-step -step on how to take a feng shui compass reading. And I'm also going to give you the annual dial. So just go and get a transparency made of that, that PDF that you're gonna receive, and then you're gonna be ready to superimpose that over your floor plan, and then we'll take the next steps. So if you have any other astrology or feng shui questions or you want to know more about favorable timing using the time blazer, put your comments below and I'll answer them in upcoming videos or blogs, how, whatever the case may be. And if you like this content, please like the button below. Be sure to subscribe because we, want, we don't want you to miss any future videos on business astrology, business feng shui, or favorable timing with the time blazer. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot for that. And until next time, may good chi follow.